This video is on how to find the flow rate through a pipe. We have an example. Today is May 11th, 2014, and I am going to try to teach you something once again. Here is the drawing of what I want to teach you. It is not a particularly good drawing, but it will suffice, hopefully. It won't give you too much eye strain. Over here, it will show you all these different variables that if you're taking fluid mechanics you are quite familiar with. So over here you have the specific weight of washer which as you know is 1000. We have some kind of liquid here. The density is 900 kilograms per meter cube which we can turn into a specific weight with this formula. Rho times g equals 900 times gravity. We have the height over here is 2.5 meters. We have a length here which is unknown and we have 8 meters. Now the question is asking us to find the flow rates Q. Let's continue. Now because horizontal pipe Z1 which is the head loss over here is equal to Z2 so they're both at the same level so they're equal to zero so there won't be any difference. Also, V2 is equal to zero, the stagnation point. If you see an entrance, the point is at an entrance of this pipe, then uh, that's called a stagnation point, which means the velocity there is equal to zero because of some property of fluid mechanics. Let's show you the equation that we're going to use. The energy equation. Includes x of f, but for us, we're using the fuel equation, which is slightly different, only slightly different, in that we only have a one dimensional flow. So there is a constant, there is a consistency between the two from uh, one point to the next. So our points of interest is over here, point one and point two. Now, let's look over some things to remember. Pressure going up is negative. Pressure going down is positive in a pipe. What does that mean? Look over here, point one and point two. As it moves up, the pressure decreases. So we mark that as a negative. However, over here, point one to point two, it goes in the downward direction, which means the pressure increases so that's positive. Uh, I, when I mean going down, I mean lower, lower level. So that's what I mean by it going higher pressure, which means a higher number than what recent, what it previously was. Yes. So let's continue. So using that formula that we had over here. we will attempt to solve this by using what we do here yeah. because horizontal is z1 and z2 we will remove those and we get something like this pressure 1 minus gamma L minus gamma M H plus gamma times L plus H minus P2 is 0 which gives us, if we cross out this, because they cancel out, P2 minus P1 equals gamma minus gamma M times H. Going up here, to, uh, over here we substitute P2 minus P1 with this, so over here we substitute that, P2 minus P1 becomes gamma minus gamma m times h. We substitute what we know. We know gamma, which is the gamma water, is 1000. Gamma of m is 900 uh, over 1000. Now, gamma includes rho times g. It just looks like that we're only taking into consideration density. But since they were all 
wrong. And I think we forgot X somewhere. Did we? X. Let me see. What was X? H was 2.5. Alright, 2.5. Uh, this is the best I can do with what I have, so it's gonna get kinda messy. 2.5 right here. So 2.5 accounts for this H right here. So going back to what I was saying, the reason why it looks like I'm not taking into consideration gravity is because they cancel out. They all have gravity in the formula so they'll cancel out. So we just uh, put in the density. 1000 minus 900 over 1000. H was 2.5 and then 2G over here is 2 times gravity 9.81. Use your calculator and you find out that V of 1 is equal to 2.20 meters per second. So now that we've found the velocity that means it's time to find our flow rate, which is Q equals A1 times V1. You can find that in this reference handbook right here. Right here. Q equals A times V, where A is equal to the cross-sectional area of flow, and V is equal to the average flow velocity. And you can also derive from it any which way you need to. Alright, so with that in mind, Q is equal to A1 times V1. The cross sectional area is also a circle, so we turn that into pi r square. Our diameter was 8 meters, and we turn it into a radius. R equals to 4 meters from V equals to 8 meters. So we plug that in for square from R square, so pi times 4 square times 2.2 meters per second. And we get a flow rate of around 111 cubic meters per second. And that's really briefly how you solve for the flow rate of a pipe with a monometer. Thanks for watching.